Hello, <laughs> welcome to Star Wars Spells Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today, Acolyte, episode four. Day? Day. Catherine, actually, Catherine, Andy, Matt. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming back. Woo, 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 woo. We got we got one less Hello. we got one less on the deck than last week. Turbo couldn't make it; his internet's down. Um, but Turbo, I know you'll be listening to this later on. I know you're very proud that you're a man who collects physical media. So, you know, I bet you feel pretty clever with yourself right now Th- that you can entertain yourself um, at home without your internet. Um, Catherine, day, what's going on with day? Why is it called day? Where's the da- Where's the dash? I thought it was. If there's two characters, there's no dash. What, what's going on here? Make, make it make sense. That's what I thought. I had a perfectly good theory and <laughs> it's not working. Um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure how the day, well, maybe, you know, that wanting to to do things while the daylight's there. But, yeah, great episode. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Thumbs up. Question from without notice. Um <laughs> Yes, we'll do it. We'll do a proper thing. Andy, Andy Bell, just chilling. How's it going, mate? I listened to your whole episode with Rick filling away over last week. It was very good, too. Oh, Rick's a good guy. He made us look credible. So uh, no, I'm I'm really grateful that he joined. He's um, what what the knowledge that guy has got is is unbelievable. But um, yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Thank you for listening as well. Uh, that's two. That's two people I know of now. <laughs> which is, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very yeah, happy guy. Uh, no, loved it. Loved it. Thought, thought it was it was great. It was. Um, I've got a few theories. I've got a few theories, not only about the the storyline itself, but about how it's going to be executed. Um, it felt it's very much feeling like a, a murder mystery now, and uh, I think there'll be a few more flashbacks coming our way, um, aka kind of uh, knives out. Or glass onion style, um, but yeah, really, really enjoyed it. And uh, bringing up the rear, Grand Admiral Mole, Matt, how you going, buddy? Just finish your oh, snacks always, there. Always in the rear, always in the rear. <laughs> um, no, no, very good episode. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed this one. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed all of them, but uh, this one was this one was good Star Wars today. Good Star Wars today. Some definite whoa moments. Um, and it's left me thinking, yeah, definitely put some theories in. And, you know, we heard before there were not going to be cameos from the... All right, call your jets, call your jets. We'll get... We'll, we'll get we'll all right, get all right. We, 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 they, they said things, they weren't going to do things, and now... Well, they're they, not going to yeah. say these things up front. But, uh, by the way, also, if you are listening, we obviously acolyte scene we're getting a few more listeners which is nice so leave us a five-star review if you haven't already so welcome to everybody who's been listening and sharing and and all that kind of stuff so apparently people like five-star reviews do some of those apparently it's good for the podcast um so yeah short episode this week though 35 minutes i was a little disappointed when that popped up on my disney plus is anybody else a little bit 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 upset about that gonna only 35 i didn't see it but it definitely when it ended i'm like oh (laughs) more please (laughs) please sir i want some more yeah i um yeah i think i think that's the one i think that's the one thing that if i was to be i wouldn't say critical but be surprised about is that certainly in the first two episodes especially the ending of the of the of the premiere the double episode and the way it ended on episode two was quite abrupt, and this is also a, a quite abrupt ending. Um, and I get it; it's to it's to build suspense um, and anticipation for next week. But um, I don't think it's been as quite as abrupt as this in any other any other episodes or sorry, any other series that we've seen up until now. So yeah, it it it, it, it jarred me a little bit. I must admit, I didn't look at the runtime until afterwards, um, and it didn't feel that quick it was just the abruptness of the ending that surprised me mo you're the king of the run times did you did you know that one going in i did i saw, i thought it was 38 minutes actually joshua but well, i think it was 38 35 38 credits, 38 is equals yeah 35 with credits or 33 with credits and then because you know they always put the the german german credits the arabian <laughs> credits the subtitle oh you know all that it's about four minutes of just nothing at the end um no one watches that so uh but well, the Germans, the Germans might, but um, <laughs> they anyway. stick around for the. There must be yeah. a legal reason. Why do they? But it was short. Every but it was good content. 
it was, was good content. It was it was dense. Yeah. So where do we pick this thing up? I'm just trying to remember where we start. We start on. I'll tell oh, you where we start. Where do we start? How, I've watched this how, thing twice. How long does it take to get to Kalnaka's house? Not, not. It's ah, oh, damn it. It's not very. It's not long to get Kofar. Is this the joke? <laughs> I, I, is this the joke you, you were pre, you were previewing in the chat before? <laughs> I, t- I told you I had a cracking, yeah, cracking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Go away. It's not the worst thing I've I've, I've heard today. So it's not the worst thing today. So yeah, <laughs> it's not the worst thing today. Um, you just... The power of Manny. Wow, yeah. we're going to get review bombed for that one. I think all of a sudden now. Say goodbye to your five stars. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to start getting a couple of one star reviews coming after us. Uh, I've honestly just drawn a blank of where this actually starts. Does it start on Kofar? It we does. start. It starts on Kofar. Yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah. Yeah. We start with Kelnaka, and we we see him mooching about his his pad and we see the um the graffiti on the walls that he's all the, the he's the, gone a little the, off the drawings the, he looks like he's gone a little off the deep end doesn't he like he's kind of doing well, some, some, scram- some, some scribblings sort of, of a madman that, that's the symbols well, on the heads of the, the witches and things isn't it i yeah. think it is that, that's, yeah. yeah i think that i think that's the symbol that um is on may's forehead yeah there's that final that final dots thing is the the symbol that from the ascension that only may has um and something something has happened that night at the at the where, where the brick the fire where, wherever the fireplace occurred mm-hmm. where the witches died and torben lost his eye and something happened with kelnaka like and they're all got ptsd um well the interesting thing was and i watched it I watched it at lunch today because it was quite short. I actually got a chance to watch it again this afternoon and I watched it with the subtitles. I did the turbo trick. I was like, well, it's only half an hour. I'll be able to knock it out quick before the kids get home. And one of the things that I noticed was that they said that Kaunaka had been, basically he'd gone for a year. He'd been gone for a year. Yeah. So it's I was kind of going, oh, maybe, because you know, all this stuff went down at the at the, you know the the witch's coven 16 years ago so i was kind of going oh maybe he's just left straight after that and no one's heard from him and he's just he's just ditched the whole thing he's been living with this um you know issue that he's got but uh no it seems like he's been um it's only been the year that he's actually been off the reservation so to speak yeah he, apparently according that- to the episode he was on that post but he hadn't responded to their to any of their communications for, for a year oh so, so he gone, gone off grid for a year off grid for a year is that right andy so are you yeah you're right yeah you're right i i suspect with the state of the ship and everything it's he's been there for quite a while i mean um the you know like i said that the, the the drawings on the wall and everything suggest that he's been there for quite a while, but he he lost contact with the um, with Corasan or stopped communicating with Corasan for a year. Something else has happened, and I, I know that we're all looking forward to getting a conclusion of the parts that we missed last week in the flashback as to what actually happened to the um, the community, the the, the 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 witches and their mothers. Um, but something else has happened because I was talking to to your point rick last week and he was saying so if our buddy torben has been in uh, a trance um for 10 years and this happened 16 years ago what why did it take him six years to get to 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 go into this trance or go into this 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 um um catacotic state that he's in at the moment and similarly with kalnaka you know why has he only stopped talking to Coruscant for the last year? So, not only I think that we are looking for some answers from that we're missing in the flashback, I think we're also missing some answers for the years between the original. Mm. And they both became Jedi masters in that time as well. Yeah, so nuts, that, that means that Torben had six, six years from being a Padawan, becoming a master, because assuming that he didn't get promoted while he was you know in his trance <laughs> maybe he did yeah. i'm not sure maybe he just hasn't spoken for six years as opposed to being i don't know whether he's been in his thing for, well, for I, 10 years i don't think he get promoted when you're just levitating in the air well, at least that, that he hadn't spoken for 10 years so it might just be that he's he's only been trancing recently but he's just taken a vow or something it, it, like you said Andy, maybe there's a coincidence to 
so, you know, a year ago, maybe that's when May started training and that's where the dark, you know, that's where all of a sudden Kanaka's gone a little bit about all the things that he saw on the, you know, are they all programmed in something like that? Have they been, had their heads messed with or I don't know, yeah. Catherine, what are you, what are you, what are you vibing? Yeah, like the timeline is a bit funny to work out. You know, you think Torben needs to face the trials, whatever they are, to go from Padawan to Knight and maybe what went down on that planet constituted his trials. But, yeah, to then make it to Master does seem pretty quick, although, you know, Anakin did seem like he was like, I can make it to master in that time. Um, yeah, so something's going down, something's making them think about things again or is triggering the memories. Is it a token it. promotion to, because they kept their mouths shut? You know, it's just like, yeah. we'll, we'll make you master. You know, <laughs> you know, you know they just get a, a promotion to be sort of moved around somewhere else. So I don't, I don't know, something kind of sneaky going on. But, uh, yeah, Kanaka's kind of just, well, I don't know if he's living his best life. He's certainly living a life. Um, definitely wants to be left alone. What I found weird, Josh, is that the um, is that at the end of episode two, they all know that May's escaped and they're and she's on her way to take out Kalnaka. But then they go, they have a bit of R and R on Coruscant before they pursue him themselves. I assumed at the end of episode two that they were, a, it was a chase. It was, there, was a, there was a chase going on, and that they would, they would also try and find Kelnaka to A, warn him and B, protect him if they possibly could. And there is a scene C, at the end of two where they get called in, isn't there? Like Sol's actually like, no, look, oh, like, they? Gotta, I'm sure there's a bit where he's on the, he's on the blower to, to got uh, it. Vanestra Rowe or whatever her name is. And, and she's just like, no, you got to come in. And I think he's going like, no, like, let got me, it. let me go. Um, I can't remember what her reason you, that's not how we that's not how we operate. You have to come, you have to report debrief. That's the way we do things. But there's something seriously up with these Jedi. Like there's just so much political political at play and I don't know, something's been covered up and I don't know, they're just Well, these, these guys are, not, are middle management. They're, like, these they're guys aren't operating they're deferring, the way they're, they're not getting the the top brass involved, like we're, where we assume someone like Yoda is. Because they keep saying, "Oh, we're not going to bother the High Council." These guys are literally like the middle management. They're the next rung down. They're basically trying to like clean up their own little mess without letting <laughs> upper management find out what they've done. You know, Matt, you're from a corporate background. I'm sure you can appreciate that. I can, man. I can. <laughs> don't, don't, don't don't annoy me with your mid level crap. <laughs> Um, so we do we um, so I'm quite sure what comes before or after but May does make it to the planet and she's got um, she's got um, Jason from the good place with him um, Quinn Quint Quit Quill Quinn Quire Camille Qu Camille God I had all the names I, I, I know all the names and um, he's sort of very conveniently in the right place at the right time kind of acting like he doesn't know anything but seems to be knowing everything. Um I mean, we can really talk about we everyone's seen the episode. I mean, is it is it I mean it's trying to get us to think that he is the hooded figure. Surely but, it's misdirection. It can't be But is him. it just misdirection or is it yes, we're gonna show you this, but it's preluding something bigger that's coming after where you'll go, Oh yeah, well duh, but actually there's a bigger thing going on. Yeah, it does feel a bit misdirectory, but he knows more than what he's saying because all his conversations with May are sort of felt like he's trying to get her to solve the problem, like he's trying to He's very get invested. Her to... It's not just, he seems like he's very invested in her success and not just because he wants her to yeah. succeed. <laughs> it's, it's that active questioning, as it were, it's like trying to get her to talk it out and come up with some kind of solution to the problem, you know, because it's, it's not just a lesson, it's a riddle. Like, I, and I think he's wanting her to get there, but whether or not he's that masked figure, who knows, it, it feels a bit too obvious, but then again, you know, like it probably is him. Yeah. but I'd Without jumping the gun. 
sorry, without jumping the gun, he also, if you, the right at the end where the the the, the Mars figure um, um, takes on the, the the Jedi, the physicality of that person, the body is is very very similar. Mm. to um manny jahinto he's a lean Jehinto. lean lean fellow yeah or very lean very lady. slight um i mean originally i thought it was uh, a female frame but it um the hands kind of gave it away a little bit um but yeah i mean it's and to your point it may well still be misdirect but it's a bloody good misdirect if it's um if it is so uh yeah they get to the planet and then she's basically kind of park on the outskirts and he's like well he's in there i found him um, he obviously well, yeah. I, it, we'll get to, we'll we'll come around to motivations I think at the end. But they basically start their trek towards the forest, and then we get back to Coruscant, catch up with Jackie, who's doing some sweet little training there. She's still. Um, I was kind of weird. I never really kind of thought that Padawans would be doing. I just assumed that they'd be training with their masters. I didn't really think that they'd be doing little technique things in groups. But maybe I don't. I don't know how the someone who knows more might know more than me. <laughs> It's a bit like it's a bit like Harry Potter, isn't it? So, you know, the teacher of the dark arts or the teacher of they may have a housemaster, which is their, which is their their full time their full time master. But at the same time, they take specialist training with with particular with particular Jedi masters uh, during the daytime. Mm. Like I said, a little bit like Harry Potter. Yeah, very I, good I analogy, kind of... Andy. Very good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I just, I, I'm, I just, I'm ignorant to the stages of kind of going. If you became a Padawan, I kind of thought maybe you just were exclusively taught. by... No one is exempt from school, Joshua. No, no, one. no well, I guess not. I would just, it just seemed weird that it was kind of like, oh, and it was actually funny because May's there, and she's sort of just watching, you know, reminiscing about you know the old days when she was a Jedi and getting a little feel for it, and then she says that she's basically going to leave, um, and you know the Jedi can take care of it, and it was quite a week. There was a, it was a moment where she just says. Oh well, you know, maybe next time I'm in town, we'll catch up and we'll go to a cantina and you can talk to me about Master Soul. It just seemed weird to me that a Jedi or a Padawan would have free time when they could just go, like, to the pub <laughs> or just go and have a social life. It just seemed really weird to me. I just, in my head, I never really thought about that that they would have lives outside of this. But I guess maybe you would. Maybe you would just roll off and do other stuff. Well, I couldn't wouldn't really call it quote-unquote life outside of it but it would be time that's not committed mm. or free or time that's, yeah study periods as we call them yeah <laughs> again again it's like harry potter it's like when the kids go off to hogsmeade have a butter uh, beer to, and... to, to have a butter beer and all that kind of stuff they get their you know they get their downtime you know we've, we haven't got a class for another couple of hours let's go to hogsmeade get some chocolate magic frogs <laughs> whatever they're called um, and just in that scene there, there was an actor who was the uh, who who was the master who was sort of teaching the the Padawans the sticks. Now, Catherine, I don't know. This is, you're the only person who may know who I thought this person was. Do you know the, who the comedian Ben Knight is? Big Ben yes. Knight. I very Ben Knight ish. It's not him. No, it's but... not. I checked the credits because <laughs> Ben Knight is an Australian comedian who's actually he's just in the Fall Guy. He's got quite a prominent role in that. And I thought, oh, maybe he's done another thing and he's done star wars and obviously you can't talk about being in star wars till you're in star wars and i thought oh wow isn't that amazing ben knight could be in star wars and i checked the credit it wasn't it was another big sort of muscular long-haired ginger man <laughs> so you know bloody workers and they'll let anybody into these star wars now we're even gingers like come on yeah but yeah it's an absolute i was like oh my god he looks familiar but no it's not no it's not. I'm afraid not. I know, Mole, what do you think? Did did you did you ever think about the social lives of Padawans or do you just kind of assume they're always tethered to their masters? Um oh look, I mean I thought you know, they're always the Jedi Order always had you know, not, not rigorous training. I mean you always saw the Padawan sort of it depends on the the timing as well. Like during, you know, the sequel trilogy we had Anakin in the middle of a war, you know, so as Anakin and Ahsoka would always be going on missions, whereas we're right now we're in a time of, you know, pretty prominent peace. So you, there wouldn't be a lot of action mm. other than, you know, um, education and um, very, very small missions. So um, 
I guess it just goes with the times, really, as to what's available. Um, it just feels like they're, yeah. they're casting a lot wider net and they're a lot more patient. And like we, I think we were talking about the other day with Yord, where it's like Yord probably would have crashed out a lot earlier if there, if, it, if, it, if it wasn't a peacetime and there was a lot more you know time and patience given to people to, to, to kind of get it right. Um, so we, we have a bit of that. And then we check in with those cameos that you talked about before, Mole. We get down to the Jedi briefing room and bloody Whoa. hell. There's some faces. We got told there was no cameos going on in this. What, what's going on, Matt? What, what's no, no, this all they about? said there was going to be. They're not going to be doing too many cameos, but they would be relying on, you know, old Republic. Oh, sorry, no, new Rep- High Republic, mm-hmm. and EU is where they would be sort of deriving their cameos or characters from. But Kiati Mundi <laughs> is not <laughs> that. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's it. I thought, oh, it must be just a Syrian or whatever. How do you say it? Syrian? Syrian? I just know um, he's a big Syrian stud. I just, that's, I just know from the Blue Harvest. I saw Horse's from... tweet today. He's like, oh, is well, that? A, sh- a special shout out to Hall, our friend Horse Burkhart, friend of the show, who not only beat cancer this week, but got Kiati Mundi back in Star Wars. So oh, what a God. great week for What for a Horse. gift. We love it's you, like... mate. So there's, there's our gift. There's the world's gift to you. Um, hopefully you stay healthy and good and everything's great. But th- how amazing is that? <laughs> so know, it was It was him. They just you know, put him. some just for men in his beard and took a few lines off and there you go. Still but I mean, prick. I wikipedia him. <laughs> He's supposed to be born in 93BY. Yeah. Uh, so- and and I, was, I was just saw on socials that apparently that date came from a cd rom from 1999 or something so must be true then well that yeah. that can be that can be that can be, can be retron um that's fine i yeah. mean his age but you know it does really open the door because i mean his everyone has been talking about, you know, you can't have Sith in this show because Kiati Mundi said on The Phantom Menace the Sith have been extinct for millennia and now we have all these Jedi and middle management covering up shit and political stuff and now he's there. It just it's really great. opens it's, the it's, door. It's so perfect because it's... Oh, like, it does. They it's, it's very smart. Like, the, you know, the thing a bit, I'm not going to go into too much of this, but... Yeah, a lot of the basis for people who poo-poo stuff is because they think they're smarter than everyone else and that somehow they've thought of something or some loophole that somehow Lucasfilm hasn't because Lucasfilm is dumb <laughs> and they're not as smart as them. They're way smarter than you are and there's a hundred people in that office who probably thought the exact same thing that you did and they've just probably just gone, oh, well, we'll just put Kiati money in it and we'll just either have him literally not know what's going on or be in the dark or consciously keep on his Cover mouth up. shut. Yeah, which is even better. So it's just like it's it's so perfect. It's just it, it, you know, it's I love it. I love that they were going. Oh, you think you cl- you think you're smart? Like we already think that you think you're smart. That you're gonna say something like that when you see a red lightsaber in a trailer or whatever, and you're gonna be like, Ugh. so we're just gonna put him in here, and we're gonna get him to make get him to make sense for us. Um, you know, and regardless what they do, they won't accept it anyway. So who cares? But and the other one was Plo Kloon. Was it Plo Kloon? I don't. Kiati Mundi was in the credits. Um, I don't know about Plo Kloon. Why don't not? Think so. Well, yeah, I agree, but but why not? Why not? I mean, at the end of the day, if we're, if 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 we're if we're going to melt down about a a a character that had what maybe three, maybe four lines in the entirety of a trilogy, um, and then someone that didn't have any lines at all. Hmm. Uh, you know, we've got. Then we should be looking at ourselves rather than what's on the screen and uh, 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 something to be concerned about. Uh, why not? Why not? This, this plow metal looked a little bit sharper, a little bit more serrated. I don't know. I need to watch it on the big yeah, screen. Come on. Yeah. I, I feel like there'll be a, a Star Wars You can change your mask over the years. I feel like exactly. Star Wars. Just, but I mean, that race something. might have that certain mask for breathing. So. Yeah, um, okay. but you can I'm, ha- I'm, I'm happy if it is. I'm not, I'm not going to say that can't be, but um, 
Yeah, Keanu Bundy was specifically in the credits because I guess he spoke, but Plo Clooney was just, well, if it was him, was just sort of in the background. So I, I didn't see anything in the credits to confirm. But it feels like a Star Wars.com overnight thing. They'll just be like, who were the, the Jedi on the thing? Da, da, da. Yes, that's Plo Koon. Um Enjoy, everybody. You know, I kind of feel like those two are kind of bros. So I like the idea that they're just sort of... Plo Clune's arc in Clone Wars is so good and his dialogue with Ahsoka, so good. Just in case you haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> just thought I'd put that out there on this podcast. Um, so we're in the we're in the briefing room. They've kind of, they're looking at some footage of May and there's quite some interesting dialogue in that because they, they kind of go on, there's absolutely no concept that that could be anything to do with the Sith, which is quite interesting. They're just not even like entertaining the idea that there's any Sith involved whatsoever. They're not even a, a thing. They're not. Even, they're just basically like a like the, a thing that used to exist, be like dinosaurs or whatever. But they were yeah, talking they, about you know that it possibly a Jedi trained. You know the, the solution must be the Jedi trained her, and they they did like a splinter sect or a splinter. Did anybody catch mm. that term? Catherine a splinter Amber? order. Yeah. Yeah. Which is quite a yeah, fascinating. Yeah, about Splinter Order, which is which is fascinating, and it has it has happened in the in in legend. You know, we we saw, I know it's a word that people don't like, but we saw the emergence of a grey a grey order that was um, uh, had distanced itself from the from the Jedi Order in the in the EU um, or the in, in legend. Sorry, um, so there's no reason why they can't resurrect something like that again. Um, ultimately, we know that we will believe that the the Sith originate from a faction that broke away from from the Jedi as well. Um, uh, there's no reason why there can't be. I mean, it's not. Is it the library at the Jedi, Jedi Temple where they've got the the missing twenty, the you know the the, the busts of the hmm. or the lost the lost is it lost twenty? I don't know if it's twenty. I may not have them, but yeah. they, they've essentially got all of the, the busts of all of the Jedi masters they've lost over the millennia or over the years. One of which is um, is obviously Dooku. So, so you know, the, their their most their most powerful um, of masters sometimes get disillusioned with what the order's about and do their own thing. Um, so, I don't see any reason why this is this should be any different. I, I think it's um, I think it's a sound idea. The fact that they're associating a splinter order with something that's quite sinister um, and violent and out for vengeance is interesting though. Well, and not like associating they, it with a Sith. And I think this is confirmed somewhere else. It might have been something that Alex and Molly put up potentially that it seemed like back in the day, if you wanted to just not be that involved with the order and still be a Jedi, you could kind of just yep. walk away. And I think that the idea of the lost 20 is more like, well, you're either in or you're out. So, it's more yeah. of a big deal if you leave the order and you're out because if you're out, you're out. Um, and in this case, it you know, like they've sort of gone, well, Kanaka kind of goes off. People leave. May left. They seem to have just let her leave even though she flunked out. Like, All right, well, you can kind of just go. We've got a, we've got a big convey about the kids that we can run through this thing anyway. So, yeah, it's quite a fascinating <laughs> concept. <laughs> yeah. Convey about that's good. Uh, yeah, well, in the High Republic books, um, there is, because I've only read the phase one, but there is a character in there who has not so much left the Jedi Order, but is not, you know, doing, you know, not really part of the Jedi, Jedi hierarchy. She's left to pursue like her own sort of pathway, as it were, mm. but, um, you know, is on is on a mission with the Jedi, you know, because they're, um, their things align, um, but yeah, it's it's that she's again not a grey Jedi, but not really involved in that whole sort of hierarchy, as it were. And so, yeah, that that were those pathways that people could do if they were trained, but didn't want to do the whole yeah be part right of the game, yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, which makes sense that yeah. their first thing is like, well, we don't actually keep that close tabs on everybody it's very our first thing is well somebody must have taught them that someone we don't have a really great eye on that yeah um so it's quite fascinating and and and, you know they they might think that it's someone who's left and they've trained this person but it doesn't necessarily hold that they think that the person who's trained them has 
you know, quote unquote, don't gone dark or anything like that. It's just that May May's could be dark. using yeah, that using training. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting that um, despite the clear threat, so if it is a splinter order, then fine. It's certainly a threat, whatever it is, and yet they don't want to tell the High Council. That's um, pretty, isn't that a recipe for disaster or failure? Well, well yeah, I guess this is the, the thing of you know protecting your own ass. This is a middle management again. So yeah, so essentially they go, all right. Well, we're gonna go. We're gonna go bring her in. We know where she's going. She's looking for Kanaka. It's <laughs> she's got two of them. She's going after the third. And you know, Master Saul, you're obviously involved as well. So. Then you go bring her in. We're going to get a bunch of the Jedi. We're going to get a big group of Jedi in and to do it. And Sol says, "Well, I want to come." And well, if you come, you've got to convince Osha to come because we might be able to bargain with her to get her out. Although it seems like they seem pretty happy to just <laughs> to wipe her out. Bringing her in seems like a bit of a secondary thing. But Sol seems to be genuinely wants to try and help her, um, which is quite fascinating. Um, and they bring May back into the mix, and then away we go again. Osha. Osha. Sorry. I'm going to do that. <laughs> At least I'm getting the names right. I'm just still getting them mixed up. But um, they get a they get a proper, like, what do they get? Eight or nine of them? Eight or nine Jedi or something on this? But they don't actually bring the Master Holden who was going to do it. I thought she'd just come along anyway and Sol would tag along, but they kind of just gave Sol run of the group once he decided to go. Yeah. But we get someone very special. Well, that's right. We get on the ship. And um, everybody's favourite, the Yord Horde himself, starts Arnold rimmering it up to uh, to lay out the <laughs> lay out the plan, and then uh, we get a new little furry friend, Catherine. You're the queen of the little furry friends. What what have we got going on here? Basil, Basil rules. He's he's adorable. He's smart. He tracks things. He's a king. That's two. You've got cute little droid. Cute little furry friend in here already. We're two for two. Um, somebody said that he's based on a, something, some wacky thing from a Han Solo book or something. Mole, do you know anything about this? I am not privy to this one. This one definitely hit me by surprise. King Tom so. had some photo of Han Solo punching a gerbil in the dick, like a full size one, and apparently that's what it was based. It's, it's, it's from seriously, some, wow. Yeah, like it, it looks hilarious. People was like, "Oh my god, the e, the EU is canon. It cannot be." It's just like this is the crazy shit that's in the EU. Um, but yeah, cool little character. Him and Pip not getting along though. Catherine, what's going on here? Oh, you know though. They'll become friends. I'm sure they will. Um, Looking for that Basil plushie at Japan, Celebration Japan next year. Oh, yeah. With his like, little I'm... goggles and his little little hat. Basil plushie, Pip accessories. I'm going to need more luggage. Just on Pip, um, Turbo in, on our, our Discord that we have um, put a really good photo up from one of the Star Wars Visions episodes. And there's a droid in it that is Pip. Like Pip, it's that droid is actually in that cartoon. Like it, it's identical. I don't have it on yeah. me here. Um, I, don't know. I don't know how to. Sh- the s- season one visions, I think it was. Yeah, it looks exactly like it. I, I can't put it in the chat here, but I wonder yeah. if they took it from that. I can't. It can't be a coincidence. Or was that just like a little? I'm just. I'll have to. Someone have to do the research and figure out which one came first. But that's, yeah. Very fascinating. Very nice to see yeah. that sort of stuff. Something from Visions become canon, which is very cool. Yeah, it was um, Lop and Oko episode. So that's the one with the um, girl who looks a bit like a, a bunny, and and yeah, her her little droid. There it is. That's Pip. <laughs> well, it's a different color, but it's definitely the same. Awesome. It's the same wow. little vibe of a droid. That's very cool. Um, so yeah, they get the whole crew together. Sorry, Josh. Yes, Josh. Josh just just, just done, a little, done a little bit of research in the background. Uh, yeah, apparently the otter is or the otter-looking uh, species are called Salonians, and we met them in assault at Salonia, where Han Solo was captured by his evil cousin and forced <laughs> to fight. The Otter Queen, I mean, the also law, I known mean, as a Salonian, must protect that law at all costs. Really, don't you? Really, like you've got, it's the sacred Jedi text. <laughs> However, Han luckily knew Otter language and convinced her to go easy on him. Apparently, so there you go. 
well, you know, your did decide that he'd he'd learn that language and not um oh Chirawook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did like that. Um and I did like how sort of they still kind of undermine Yord to his face as well. Vicky <laughs> and May. Yeah. Like even in the it was sort of pompousy sort of pomping around, which was quite cool. And uh yeah, so they land on the planet. Some really lovely uh Location shooting as well. So I think that was shot in Wales. Andy, you're a local. Yeah, it local felt Brit- very. Brit- yeah, it felt very Lord of the Rings, didn't it? I started um, uh, as they were setting off in in procession and, and behind behind Basil. It, I started humming the, uh, the the Fellowship theme to myself. It looked very very Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I believe it was. Um, yeah, I believe it in the either in the Brecon Beacons or in Snowdonia. So yeah, it's de- definitely in Wales without a doubt. There was a, my favorite line in the whole episode. I don't know why it made me laugh so much because it's actually played. I'm like, I'm sure it's not played 100 percent straight. It's when um, Jackie is talking to the local about what they're and she's trying to describe Kalnaka. She's just like, he's a Wookie, he's tall, he's hairy. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> that just made me laugh. I thought that was quite funny. Um, that was a good design. That as was well. interesting. That was interesting. She used a Universal Translator. Very Star Trek. Very, very Star Trek. When she was asking about directions of where to find, did you notice yeah. she had that? She the had that translator. Droids. We'd we'd never we'd never seen anything like that in Star Wars before, and I thought, ah, oh, straight out of Star Trek. You can't stick a fish in your ear in the Star Wars universe, Andy. I don't, I don't want to burst your your Welsh Lord of the Rings bubble here, but uh, the location shooting for Kofar was done on Madeira in Portugal. I was that just, the jungle uh, bit, or was that the the almost the entirety of the shooting was done in Portugal? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. I just did my little. Well, I like Portugal too. I know on, Andy, on the, you like on the Portugal, cuff so. researching. <laughs> We've just got our real time, real time. Sorry, I've just ruined your day. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no worries, no worries. I, I prefer Portuguese over the Welsh anyway. So no good, good, good Ooh. chicken, according to uh, Josh Chapman. Oh, mate, tweet, I'm kidding. Tweet I'm kidding. Portuguese. To, oh, mate, take me back to Lisbon. Woof. Go oh, another no. eating holiday. Nando's. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so, and then we sort of catch up with May, um, May and um, Kaimir, and um, they're slowly waking their way towards the thing. And, uh, yeah, they, they basically just about get there, and um, May just basically has a change of heart. Um, we sort of talked about last week – what her motive what, was her motivation just to kill these Jedi? Was she really in for the long haul? It's kind of weird because she does actually kind of go, you know, I want this more than anything, blah 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 blah, and then she about faces and just kind of goes, oh, the fact that these Jedi didn't kill my sister kind of means that I'm not quite, I don't really need to do this anymore. Um, what do you think of that, Mole? Do you think that was a bit of a an about face, or was she is she setting him up? Does she know more than she's letting on? What's going on here? Yeah, it was it was a bit of a strange about face but I, I think there was more misdirection again like you sort of had Kamir tied up in the trap you know sort of you know oh, I don't need you anymore I don't need to go ahead with the mission without the weapon I don't know I just feel like it's trying to lead you in one direction and and then you know and misdirect you to another. Really turn herself in it's it, or it, it seems like they're opening up the possibility of May coming back to the light. I don't know. Um, well, it's funny when that happened. I don't know about you guys, and we'll jump around everywhere. But when it looked like she was softening, I actually thought that they might have killed Osha at that moment and kind of gone, "Well, you can if one's coming back up, you can." maybe you, you could erase the other one. Like she might've got a lightsaber to the stomach. It's quite interesting because the shot where she's side on this lightsaber does actually start mm. like it's yeah. coming from through her. And then he obviously, or he or she or whoever it is, swings it up and you can see that it's on the other side. But um, I thought that was very clever directing, but I don't know, Catherine, what's going on? What's going on with May? She, does she know it all? She looks, she obviously looks surprised when she gets to Kalnaka, but it feels like she, she really wants to get rid of, she wants to sort of clear the obstacles beforehand. Yeah, so I think May's now questioning everything because Osha's still alive. She's questioning, well, do I need to do this now? But 
yeah, she's it's sort of like she's got herself into this path um, and now, yeah, she doesn't know what to do. She well, there's another, doesn't really know what to do. There's yeah. an interesting moment in there as well, Andy, I don't know if you where they're walking through the trees and there's the big bugs on the trees and mm. um, which I think is going to play into next week because they actually make a point of going, it, it came after the light when the lightsaber came up, which makes me feel like that however they're going to get out of that mess at the next episode, I think all those bugs are going to, whether they run back through that forest or something, all the bugs are going to come attracted to all the lightsabers. So I think that's what's going to happen next week. But uh, anyway, Matt, uh, I, Osha actually sort of touches the bug and she's like, I can feel the force. Like, and I listen to it with my headphones on. You can actually feel the, like, you know, the, you know, when she put her hand. Do you think her connecting back to the force had anything to do with May? Because she softens around that, right around that time like whether she feels the connection between the two of them at the moment she starts using the force again yeah i wouldn't be surprised i think that they i think they complement each other it's that yin and yang situation that you talked about last week mm. you know between the two of them, they're, they're stronger together and potentially a dyad which is going to upset so many people uh which i think is hilarious um um people really are they yeah protective it's of that, uh, i don't know like I, I, like don't, the I don't know, mate. The diet's such a like I a Ray and Ray and Kylo thing. It's not really a thing before that. Like I feel like people are like, oh well, you know, if it had been I, like I, Anakin I, and Luke and Leia or a dyad, people would be really protective of it. But it's I don't know. But again, who know, who can predict these things? <laughs> who can who knows? But no, I, without a doubt, I think they complement each other and they balance each other. So if you think of one as being extremely uh, extreme in this area and 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 the other extreme in, in the other and then when they're together they kind of balance each other out and almost calm each other down one is al- one is acid one is alkali um and so yeah i think i think there's an i think there's an awful lot in that um i do know that sorry i do think that um uh to your first to your earlier point you know when i think a lot they may well get out of it next week uh, by the skin of their teeth but i don't think they'll all be getting out of it um, no, there's a few, there's there's a few sort of, of faceless disposable Jedi. red shirts. <laughs> there's a lot of Jedi red shirts in that in that crew that I don't think will be uh, will be coming back. <laughs> uh, what do you reckon, Mole? You think there's um, what did you think when did did you think that Kanaka was going to be dead when she went in there? Um, I, not. I really mean, once that. I saw him in the chair, I was like, oh, this doesn't. This is this. well. <sighs> Once, you know, the guy that they're sort of preparing us to be, you know, the master is tied up, May is sort of turning, and the eerie, eeriness of the music, you know, it, it was all leading to this. But I didn't expect after, especially all the build-up to Kel Naka's story, for him just to be killed all of it, you know, at the end like that, it was... Yeah, it was. It's quite shocking seeing a Wookiee sort of like we've seen the, plenty of humans. Like to see the Wookiee go down, it's quite a, a little slash like, mark to the chest. Yeah, yeah, it's. it's I don't know. Like, do you not think? Do you not think we're going to see more of him though? It's yeah, a bit oh, like Carrie Ann Moss. I yeah, mean, oh, absolutely. Know, she's yeah. She's played very very little, and hence the point I made earlier on, where I think there's going to be a culmination of all of the different threads and all of the different happenings that we we haven't seen at the moment a little bit like they you'd conclude a murder mystery um yeah. in 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 lots and lots of flashbacks in which case I mean, we still haven't don't forget it's not a spoiler because it was in the trailer we still haven't seen Kelnaka attack have that fight with a jedi which i think is torben mm. um we haven't seen that yet I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> Excuse to Catherine. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's, it's everywhere on social media. That's all right. These things happen. Um, oh, no, it's okay. But it, uh, yeah. Sorry, Catherine. <laughs> we'll cut that out in post. No, we won't. Um, no, no, it's all good. But no, I, no, definitely. I think there's more. There's obviously more to come. Like we, there's, we need to know. But I mean, obviously, he's, he's at this point in the future, he's not going to take any place. But as far as going back to that covered and what's going down we have to figure out you know what's going on um but yeah so effectively may goes in to hand herself into kalnaka kalnaka unfortunately has met his met his end and um the sun goes down it's a very nice very almost like force awakens the sun goes down and you know she's just like oh he's here and all the light just goes out of the thing 
Did he like fly in like a Dementor? Was that? Did, did, how did uh, he? So- I was like, uh, I, I put the gif up. It was from that Chappelle show where he plays Prince, and he's hanging off the <laughs> basketball <laughs> ring, and he lets go, and he just sort of like goes down on the. You know, that was where I. <laughs> this but, is, this is very much a Harry Potter podcast this this week. Yeah. This is, <laughs> I should get my daughters ho- on. We could ho- we could do ho- Harry Hogwarts podcast. spelt out this week. <laughs> can can we just say? All right, number one. Why are you touching creepy bugs that are rotting trees? Oh, Don't touch them. As soon as Number you touch two, them, like, oh, scary flying giant bugs. Oh my god! Mm. Then number, th- then yeah, you're right. Dementors, mm. creepy, 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 levitating like, and the whole forest had very much that. Um, from the Princess Bride, that forest, you know, I don't think we'll see rodents of unusual size, but it's very... It was a classic creepy forest, wasn't it? I was thinking yeah, of Mirkwood yeah. from the Hobbit movies is where my brain mm. went, which had the yeah. big spiders and stuff, and obviously Forbidden Forest, Harry Potter again. But, uh, yeah, don't touch, the, don't touch the weird-looking things on trees. Bad, yeah. bad move. But, yeah, essentially the Jedi sort of turn up to Kolnaka's house, and, of course, <laughs> um, Yord says, you know... Osha, stay at the back, <laughs> and it was a it was a beautiful it was a beautiful shot. Like it just the way that it just came and in, slid into the into the into the shot there, and really announced themselves. Um, and quite interesting, like you said, Andy, like quite slight of frame as well. Like you're sort of used to seeing these mm. bulky. I suppose you you know Vader's quite big and imposing. I mean Maul's imposing in a different way, but this is sleek and. Yeah, even sort of the the way that the um, the uh, I don't know the cape or the the tunic or something was quite interesting as well. Is that mask looks good, doesn't it? Well, under the un, under that cape as well, or under that shroud as well, he had he he had naked arms yeah, apart from like um, braces. Oh, really? Wearing braces. He, there were no gloves. There were no gloves there. No glove, and no it glove. looked like beyond the bracer, there was there was naked. There was naked. You know forearms it was um i need to have another look but um that's what it seemed like to me anyway which, well, which begs got his question. little backpack i did i did sort of when i watched it the second time i've gone has he got a bag or something with him and he does have a little backpack so he could do like a peter parker quick change yeah the the question i had for you guys and i'm sorry if i'm preempting a question you had or you've got josh is um who screams first because is it May screams first, and then our boy screams next, or is it the other way around? Because I can't. The Jedi hear the scream first, and then May hears a different scream. They're different screams, aren't they? I'm well, not, I hear I'm not... May. May screams to trick Kymie into coming where the trap is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. May... Okay. So May yeah. screams to to so Kymie runs where the trap is. And then she leaves him and goes off to the... And I wasn't sure because she sort of trips over and falls in the flowers. I don't know if there was any significance of that. Was it just that she... You know, they all sort of puffed up and then Basil sort of sits there. And it kind of doesn't explain why he runs off. Does he just smell danger? Does he smell the Sith? Is that why he runs off? Because he smells danger or whatever? Is that why he basically runs ahead? Or did Basil... I mean, did Basil do it? Did Basil kill... Basil's right there. He's there before. Basil's an angel. Basil, shady Basil. Basil slander. Whoa, whoa! Have I just cracked this case? Is Basil maybe kind of oh, Basil? He 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 mind effed Basil, and he uh, he did the job. Basil, he got busted. He's a sweet, lovable boy. No, no, I'm calling it now. Love you, Catherine, but I I'm I'm, I'm on Josh's side here. I think he's onto something. He was there all along. He was just standing there. He ran off. He ran ahead. And all of a sudden, you know, you know, I'm sure um, Carl Nucka loves furry animals. He's probably like, come in, bro. This is the only company that I would be happy to see would be a furry friend. And then Basil gets the crazy eyes. Lightsabers him across <laughs> the chest. Well, where does he get the lightsaber from? He could have got it from anywhere. He's in a Jedi ship. He could have just grabbed one off the, you know, grabbed one off the wall. No. Mole, are no. you going to back me up on this one? You're on your own, buddy. <laughs> 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 we vindicated. 
<laughs> I demand vindication. I'm gonna get hashtag Basil did it going. Basil brush, no. <laughs> they need they need him for merch sales, buddy. No way. He's mm. a good guy. He's a tracker. He was suspiciously just just there. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, so basically May gets there, interrupts him. He goes, Wow, she's here. Jedi run in. And uh, yeah, like you said, the dark side figure comes, gets up in May's face. Sorry, Osha's face. Doesn't kill her. Brushes her aside. Um, I love how Sol's like, run! Even though he's like fully armed with the saber like right next to her. It's like, yeah, not if he wants if he wants to kill you, you're dead. Well, he's not going to just, yeah. just stand there, I guess. But uh, then we get that lovely shot of all the, the, the Jedi lighting their sabers. Which is very poor. Cool. Poor Turbo's theory of the dark yord of the Sith is well and truly debunked. No, um, yord was there. Yord was done. Yord lives good another job. day. And then, uh, yeah, this guy sort of whooshes up the ground, and all the dust and the debris goes everywhere, and it pushes all the Jedi back. And then you got to wait till next week. Mm. Good old Star Wars cliffhanger. Well, I mean that. I mean, Andy, you spoke about sort of the abrupt, abrupt endings of the first two episodes, you know, and this one was a, abrupt, but it did, you know, it bang, it gave you the the punch. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, yeah, it was you executed wanna, you, sort of perfectly. Yeah, we want, we want to, you know, we're excited for next week now. Um, the the I have another question for you. Sorry, Josh. Please. Um, the um, what do you think? The why do you think? That the dark figure didn't kill Oka, Osha. Sorry. Why do you think that he spared? He or she or they spared, spared her. Do you think that he, see, he, she or they see Osha as a substitute for May now that May's given in and not? Okay. But potentially, but I, think, I, I, yeah. Well, if he kills yeah, her, I, then she's she's not gonna she's not gonna stick the path either. Yeah. So it's sort of like if I don't yeah, know if the Jedi. Well, they're obviously not going to think that. I mean, who, it depends who makes it out of it. So it's sort of you know if the, I've got a feeling that they're all going to get knocked over. There's going to be a bit of a scuffle. They're going to run into that foresty bit where all the, the flies that the big bugs are. The bugs are going to come in, seeing all the lightsabers. There's going to be chaos. Some are going to make mm. it. Some aren't. He's going to slip out. Osha will probably slip out as well, and May, May, yep, and uh, they um, and they're kind of back at square one a little bit, and then basically Master Soul's the last one, yeah. And also we haven't touched on that Master Soul literally was like, when we get out of this, I'll uh, I'll tell you about what went down. So he obviously knows more than he's letting on. Mm. Yeah, I actually don't think anyone's going to die. I think what we've seen is. All we're going to see of this conflict for now, I think they're going to be knocked away. And they're like, what do we see? I don't know. I think they. Oh, well, I think sure. that's why the bugs. Like, where they made a point to say, "Hey, the, these bugs are attracted to the light." So I think the bugs will fly in and basically cause chaos and give the chance for the the Sith to get away, and that'll sort of clear off that where they nine Jedi can't take down one person because they basically get distracted. Um. But mm. I don't know. I, yeah, I kind of feel like he, he's, you know, this this guy's put a lot of effort into Osha. So I think if you're going to kill into May, sorry, God, if you kill Osha straight away, then it's like, well, I've lost her. She's not going to, you know, I've got to basically keep manipulating it. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe they'll both be there. Maybe they both stick around and it's like, well, we're going to work together. I, I don't know. I don't know where this is going. Is, like, is Sol going to basically get them both on the ship and say this is what really happened? And that's either good or that's bad, or Sol's got a target on his back more, or we don't. Are we going to find the identity of this person? Does it matter? Is I, yeah. These are the last episode. This is the last episode anybody's seen as well. So they're very purposely gone right. Well, you can see this much. Mm. Hopefully, we don't want people to leak stuff. You know, some stuff did get leaked a little bit, but there's you know, the meat is coming. The real sizzle on the patty is the next four episodes. No, another one. If if we suspect Kumir is is the bad the, the big bad in this, 
he's been with May until he fell into the trap. He's pretty much been with May all the time up up to that point. How would he have got ahead to have killed Kelnaka? Because we see that's all to do it. Well, he remember he went off at one stage to um, get more water, quote unquote. So he could have, oh, okay, okay, you know, done it then and he, maybe done, you know, he, that power of force running like, that we only not saw during through, but Phantom Menace. The thing is he also have he's, led he's, her astray, yeah, yeah. took her far away, you know, clipped out of the trap in two seconds, and then gone and killed him interesting question though is why would he care if kalnaka dies it's not his mission like yeah he it's may is very per- this is like very personal to to may this is basically her you know these four jedi slighted me they got my sister killed they got my coven killed and he's basically using that as like well this is your test as you go kill those jedi and you know if she's going well i don't want to do this anymore what what does he care it's not like well i'm here i might as well just do it well that's why why, why that's why one of the reasons why i'm asking the that's one of the reasons why i'm asking the question as to when it actually happened because if you think about it it wasn't until she entrapped crimea that she spilled the beans and said no i'm not doing i'm not doing this anymore i'm actually going to hand myself in Mm. So somehow, somehow, either he or something else found out where May's head was at at that moment in time and thought, well, you ain't going to hand yourself into Kalnaka. We'll go and kill him ourselves. Oh, that's so true. She was going to hand have, you. You don't, you, you don't have anyone to hand yourself into. So it's that, it's the timing of it that is, um, I mean, we never know, you know, um, Kumir might be might be as fast as A Train, for example, and he might he might he might be able to run really really fast. I'll be curious to May see and, if we you know like next week we go you know there's all the showdown and blah 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 and whatever happens for whatever reason it's I'm you know they're not going to resolve it all in this episode. It's very likely that the Sith will get away or whatever. If they run through the forest and they just find Kumir like hanging up and he's still just like hey what's going on I've been hanging here the whole time you know whether there's a whole exactly and you go ah oh, well did he give him the slip and then hang himself back up on the thing? Or, you know, is he dead? Do they find him and he's just like, uh, and he's dead on the thing? Like, or something like that. Like, I don't trust you, Leslie Headland. I don't trust any anything that you're throwing at me. You're, 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 no. you're throwing, you're trying to throw misdirection pies at me and I'm not, I'm not buying it. So I'm not sure, but you're right. I think there are going to be a few red shirts. I think a few of those Jedi aren't going to make it out. I think Yord will be okay. Though. Yep, Yord will be fine. Do, do you, does anyone else get a bad vibe from Master Vanistra? I'm not. I'm not getting good vibes from her. Well, you know, she's I've, the system. She's become the system. Yeah, like this is the thing. Having read a, a few of the books with her in it in in Phase One of High Republic, I can't say she's you know, gone to the dark side or anything like that I'm I can say I'm a little disappointed that she seems so yeah gone to the system as it were but um I can't say she's dark side oh no I don't think she's definitely dark I think she's just no. she's just a company man now She's just yeah. she's been in the thing long enough. She's seen you know there's a creeping influence of the Republic it seems, and that they've kind of you know and I think I guess also the High Republic books haven't ended, so we don't know how that gets left as well and where a no. character's at at that point as well. But am I right? In, am I right, Catherine, in saying that in the High Republic book she's actually quite she's quite a maverick. She's quite she's quite out there as a as a character. She's young, she's... feisty, doesn't play by the rules. Oh, I wouldn't put it that far she's 16 years old and she's just been made a knight which is very young um Mm. but she was a padawan (laughs) to um one of the major characters of phase one um and she leads some young adult books and in some of the other books and she takes on a, a padawan who lost his master through events and she sort of helps him and and he formally becomes her Padawan. But, yes, her sort of 
most maverick thing is that her lightsaber is also a light whip. Uh, yeah. which is sort of frowned upon a bit, but she said, you know, I saw it in a vision, like this is which what I saw. Which we haven't actually seen yet. So there is still no. a bit of footage. That I have seen is <laughs> in the trailer. <laughs> there is still a little bit of footage yet that hasn't come out yet. Um, well, we've hit, we just about hit the hour mark here, guys. Is there any, anything else outstanding we want to put on this one? Good episode. I've, you know, I've, it was, I felt a little bit talky-talky at the start. But I liked that they were kind of building the relationships and setting the ground and then it sort of hit the ground running and it, it got very interesting and, again, took some interesting turns. So um... I, I kind of like that bit at the start on Coruscant in the temple because it's sort of like this is what temple life is like. Mm. And it was a bustling place. We saw a lot of people. And you're trying to think back to the prequels, there weren't a lot of people in the temple corridors and, and so forth. It's almost because, like, and the public can is... just kind of, like, no one bat an eyelid that May was walking around. Oh, yeah. she was walking around. <laughs> and <laughs> this is really what, um, you know, the Jedi were like. This is everyday life for the Jedi. So, in a way, we're getting a bit of an insight into that. So, you know, I, I, I found it interesting seeing that part. And I bet you other boys, Andy Mole, anything you want to want to lay down before we send this sucker home? After you, um, nothing from my end. I I, I enjoyed it. It's I, I love a good cliffhanger. Um, yeah, I'm I'm dying to find out who this master is. One because you know of where, you know what it does for the timeline. Is it the just... apprentice or the master? That's what we don't know, do we? Mm. Yeah, exactly, and and how, and how May and actually May, and when I say May, not not Osha, um, <laughs> and and how and how you know Osha and May's storylines changing now as well. Like, um, you know, is this just a split second of um, you know just backflipping, or you know, will she with Kanaka dead and the Master appearing? Is she going to go back back onto her mission? Is she going to get back on track? Or yeah, I. I, I I mean, I'm I'm ex- I'm I'm excited. I mean, the only thing that would be really annoying and and would actually pique interest is if they had like a mid season break and you sort of made you wait two weeks for the next episode. That would actually keep people frothing for even more. Mm, let's not give them any oh, ideas. Please, I just li- <laughs> no, I don't I've just that. lived through the you know the month long break through season three of Bridgerton. We can <laughs> we can't do that. We can't do that. Don't give them- social media would not survive. Think of the ideas, Andy. Any uh, any closing thoughts, buddy? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll ramp now. And I think even Leslie herself has says that progressively it gets accelerate it accelerates episode on episode. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, like I said earlier on, I think it's the third time I've said it now. I, I think there's going to be a, 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 a some time and some pacing that allow us to find out exactly what happened. Or maybe that's going to wait until season two. No idea at all. I still think I'm still confused about the timings of certain things, but I think that's intentional. Uh, and to your point earlier on, um, Catherine, maybe part of the misdirect, uh, the fact that, you know, the we've got um, Quimir always seems to be at the right place at the right time. But however, conveniently out of the picture, but has an alibi when stuff is going down with other, other things. Maybe, just maybe, and I had this thought literally in the last couple of seconds, maybe it's a little bit like the 1960s Batman, where you've got Alfred that ever, ever, so, ever so often covers for Batman when Bruce Wayne needs to be Bruce Wayne. Do you know what oh, I mean? I love so that. That's the best. Yeah, I love when between, it's, it's, between, it's an between an 80 year old man and, and a Batman someone mask. else. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, it's, it's, uh, it could yeah, be like it's, it's good Scream stuff. where there's like it's, two it's, people in the ghost face. It's, you know, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Matthew and the other guy, Skeet Ulrich or whatever it is. And they're both in the, both in the mask. Yeah. But it's, it, it, nevertheless, it's, it's, it's just left me wanting to, no more which is always a good thing so yeah looking forward to it awesome well thanks again guys nice big deck of, of friends who've come along and thanks everybody for listening and enjoying the show we're, we're digging it absolutely and um hopefully we'll see you all again next week we, we, we get into the great unknown the more great unknown so uh yeah thank you guys thank you Catherine. thank you andy thank you matthew thank you josh 
Thanks, Josh. Thanks, guys. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Nothing from you, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait for the bye. Oh, he's muted. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, I was muted. I was coughing. Oh, I thought you were going to go f- finish up with the bye. I, I started the bye, but I was nothing. Muted. There was nothing I was waiting for you. Here's uh, a chance. We're still rolling. Go, Hawks. Bye. Boot. <laughs>